In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night, on which the Lord Jesus passed from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. The blessing of the fire. Let us pray, O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's back up a little more. There's a candle. Now we trace out on the candle vertical Christ yesterday and today, horizontal the beginning and the end. Our Greek letters, the, he is the Alpha, Jesus is the Omega. And now the time. All time belongs to him. And all the ages, to him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now the grains of incense representing the wounds that Jesus suffered by his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. And so now, may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Amen. Amen. So I would suggest most folks head in through the side doors now, and those to be uh, the sacraments, you'll head up straight up through the middle, and Deacon Chris going to lead us in. So you guys assemble on the other side.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with heart and love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who forsake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and may them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain 
had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone the no the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters conquer and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of peace and of your servant's hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for our God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by shedding of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother beans, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are read to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of the heavens. May this flame be found still burning until the morning star, the one morning star who never sends, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, 
has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. So we're going to blow out our candle. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed. The first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, in every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, in every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, 
Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures. And on the earth, let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. 
You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean as with a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains, the water stood. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You send forth springs into the watercourses that wind among the mountains. Beside them the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches they send forth their song. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You water the mountains from your palace. The earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord, in wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed underst understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that in the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also leaving the front took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the royal camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a gale that threw it into a panic and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, 
the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like wall on their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw that the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and behold the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, what will you once bestow on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now 
you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. So grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully at the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior, I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water. 
water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll the, back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. 
Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Dear friends, we are filled with so much joy this night for many different reasons. The greatest reason, of course, is because Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is risen. He's risen from the dead. We're also filled with joy because Lent is over, and now it's time to celebrate. Go for that chocolate ice cream. Another reason we're filled with joy is that our founding pastor, Bishop Dominic, is here with us tonight. How much joy that is. But at the Easter vigil, there is added joy. Because after a period of study and preparation, Aliyah Perez will receive tonight, in a few moments, sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Holy Communion. And then Genevieve Jimenez, Elias Lopez, and Tina Selka will receive First Communion, confirmation. And then also Luciana Acevedo, Kira Burns, Brittany Giacinta, John Medeiros, Kim Nelthrop, Jameson Sirachi and Helen Tommen will receive confirmation. One of the main reasons Bishop came, Bishop is confirming all 11 tonight. Now you'll notice they're all sitting out there, these candidates, all except Aaliyah, are clothed in white robes. We left her out, see? White robes are a symbol of the baptized, so not yet for her. Clothed in the white garment. Now notice in the gospel we just heard, St. Mark speaks of a young man in a white garment. The word they use is sindona, and he's sitting inside a tomb. Now those who are perceptive notice two, two days earlier, we heard this Palm Sunday Gospel. Two days earlier, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Mark speaks of a young man wearing a white garment, a sindona. And when the temple guards come to arrest Jesus, he runs. He runs. They try to grab hold of him, but only grab the sindona, and it fell off, and as Mark recounts, he ran away with no clothes. You see, what happened symbolically is he had lost his baptismal identity. He had abandoned Jesus, and that's, that's what happens when we sin. It's like getting rid of your baptismal garment. So tonight we hear of this young man, and we wonder if it's the same young man, if Mark meant that. And if it is, how wonderful, because he's got the garment back. The one who is filled with mercy and forgiveness. Right? The Lord. And we find him sitting in the empty tomb wearing his sindona, his white garment, and instead of running, he says, I quote, do not be amazed, not at me, about this. Do not be amazed, you seek Jesus. He's been raised. Wearing that garment, he's doing what we all must do, proclaim the good news. St. Paul wrote, in baptism we died with Christ in order to live with Christ forever, so 
put on, he said. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning our white garment. Cast off the works of darkness. And now put on the armor of light. So the resurrection, the resurrection, why is it so important? Why do so many of us believe this is a central moment, event in human history? Well, first, because he's alive. Jesus is really present and still at work with us. It's not a past event. It's happening now. We say Jesus is risen, not was risen, is He was seen in those days 11 different times, once by over 500 people. Think they're having a hallucination? The disciples were changed forever. Ten would die as martyrs. Are you going to die for a made-up story? It's so important because it proves everything. It validates everything Jesus said and did. We believe not just in his teaching, but we believe in the teacher for it shows his divinity. He is the Son of God. His word is truth. And it gives us hope. We seem to lose everything in death, don't we? Nothing in human experience seems to be stronger than death. But Jesus is. He's stronger than death. Our hope is real. It's not just a wish, it's a fact. Eternal life for those who believe. So what does that mean for us? Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us from God. Nothing, not our sins if we seek his mercy, no other person, not a government, not even death. Nothing separates us from God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Follow him. And what does it mean? I am called to live in his light. And as we saw tonight, to be that light for our brothers and sisters. So, so, we who wear the white garments, we who wear the baptismal garments, not just these ten, but all of us, and soon Aaliyah, we who are clothed in Christ, do not be afraid. He is risen. And somehow, if your garments get a little ripped or torn or dirty, come to him. And wash your robes in the blood of the Lamb. Don't be afraid. Proclaim the good news. Live the good news. He is risen. Happy, happy Easter. Now would you please stand. I'd like to present to you in our front row, there's Aaliyah who has been preparing all these months by Sister Anne for this moment. So we're all gathering first now to pray for her. Aaliyah, as we prepare to offer these prayers, I'm gonna invite you to kneel now and your sponsor will put right hand on your right shoulder. And so, my dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of our sister in her hope that as she is about to approach that font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow upon her all his merciful help. So now in the ancient tradition of the church, litany of the saints. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, 
Pray for us. Saint John. Pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us. Saint Stephen. Pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us. Saint Lawrence. Pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Pray for us. Saint Agnes. Pray for us. Saint Gregory. Pray for us. Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Athanasius. Pray for us. Saint Basil. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us. Saint Columba and Saint Dennis. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring these chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. And now Aaliyah and your godmother will be going now to the font. Let us ask God now to bless the waters of our font, have the intention to bless all the water here. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism, O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, 
that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to satisfy it. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue, O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized, O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously now unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, that human nature created in your image wash clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. So now, may the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down to your Son in the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, Leah, this moment I invite you to renounce sin and make your profession of faith. The response is, I do. Leah, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Leah, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? A moment has come. Elias steps now to the font of rebirth. Leah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. so proud of this young woman and now you're going to be escorted by your godmother for receiving that garment the white garment joining us as members of the baptized
We, we can get that later. <laughs> Mr. Ann can do that. She knows how to do that. Just stay right there. It's okay. It's okay. Just, she's fine. Now I'm going to ask, uh, first of all, say this, Aaliyah, you become a new creation. You are clothed in Christ. Receive your baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus that you may have everlasting life. And now, Godmother, we want you to come up. Please come forward to give Aaliyah now her own candle like the rest of us. Aaliyah, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of the light. Keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes again, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. When you have a bishop, he takes over now. <laughs> We're so blessed to have Bishop Dominic, who is going to renew our baptismal promises and then sacrament of confirmation. I do. You believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do.
God, the, oh, just, I'm just going to do this one prayer, Bishop. Uh, God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So you all can be seated, and uh, now confirmation.
Okay, let us stand on this most holy night when Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. We pray with one mind and one heart that the joy of Easter may be shared by all the world. Please respond, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that she may rejoice in Christ's triumph over sin and death, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the human family, that it may work together to establish true peace and justice among all nations and peoples, especially in the Ukraine and the Middle East, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family of St. Columba, that we may respond to our baptismal covenant by ministering to the needs of our brothers and sisters, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and the newly confirmed, that they may carry the light of Christ into a world darkened by sin, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and for their caregivers, that they may be strengthened by the death and resurrection of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially NYPD officer Jonathan Diller, Janine Belize, Diana Monaco, Sidney Perez, and Rebecca Rodriguez, that they may rejoice forever at the Paschal Feast of the Kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We pause as we add our private intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, on this joyful night, we are thankful that we share in the risen life of your Son. May we listen always to his voice, walk gladly in his footsteps. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated now, and our four candidates for First Communion will present the gifts.
Pray, brothers, sisters, my sacrifice, yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of the Holy Church. Except we pray, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially with the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give 
new birth of water and the Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace. Command we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray. Bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice, his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. history of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. Humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we wait the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Friends, this is the moment that Aaliyah and Elias and Tina and Genevieve will receive Holy Communion for the very first time in their lives. This most precious gift left to us at, by Jesus at the Last Supper, his very presence, the gift of the Holy Eucharist, may this just be a beginning for you of a life filled with grace. So come to the Lord's table as often as you can to receive the most precious body of Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the mind. Only say the word, and my soul shall be We ask everybody to pause for just a little bit while our first communicants come up and then in, indeed all who are confirmed tonight will 
receive first, and then followed by the rest of the congregation.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by the sa Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for your perseverance, but what a night, huh? So I'm so proud of uh, all of you for receiving your sacraments tonight, and they're going to join me in the procession out. After Mass, we'll make a little receiving line, and I hope you greet them as we go out. Don't take off your robes yet, because after the greeting, come back here for a little picture. We like to have a group picture, all right? So congratulations to you. Again, our heart goes out to Bishop Dominic. Bishop Dominic, thank you so much. You make it a very special night. Thank you so much. It's always good to have him home. And uh, thank you to the clergy here today. Great work all week. Our fine servers have been outstanding. I should mention the catechist, Deacon Chris, your catechist, Sister Anne Elizabeth, catechist, Barbara Falcone, catechist preparing uh, these 11 for the sacraments. Thank you. Choir, excellent job. Ushers, greeters. Uh, yeah. Lectors, extraordinary ministers, hey, thank you all. I have to stop because we'll be here all night, but uh, and to my dear parishioners, thank you. It is a joy, it's a joy to be your pastor. These are great nights for us, aren't they? So thank you for being here tonight. And uh, we always defer to the bishop to give us now the final blessings. Thank you for inviting me tonight. No, thank you. What a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again to everybody. What a great, great celebration. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God always bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell's state, and all evil spirits who wander about the earth, seek the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing, in the hymnal number 536, and we will sing verses 1 and 4.